<laughs> Cancel me for cursing at a dog. How about that? Um, How about that? Let's get to it, man. Welcome, hey. welcome to episode forty of the Where's Brunch podcast. Hey, hey. hello, people. Four zero. Four zero. We have sat down for hours forty times. Okay. Yes, we've been more than <laughs> we've been talking yes. a lot for forty episodes oh, now. Man. We are here. First, we were we were warming up and yeah. we were practicing practice sessions to get, to get comfy, and then boom, here we are. You know, he went to go get his toy just now, and, and I like, put it up. He's damn, like, damn, I, I hate this, this week. I was ready. I hate this dude. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Where's Brunch podcast. We appreciate you here listening and watching. As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also give us a rating if you're listening. We like five stars. <laughs> yeah, the okay? five stars are the best. The five stars are the best. Give us the five stars. We're on all of your streaming platforms to include Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can get us on Amazon and anywhere else that streams and you can also follow us on youtube and watch us there hey, hey. talk to us and you can follow us on instagram at where's brunch podcast as well as tiktok yep and we even have a facebook page we even got a facebook page that's for the grandmas, for the grandmas. <laughs> Jinx. For the grandparents. For the grandparents to, to, to check in on us, all right? Yo, we got something to sip here. This looks so, so summery. So I made, um, <laughs> this is kind of like a Tom Collins riff, oh. right? So Tom Collins is typically gin. Um, it's going to be lemon juice, mm-hmm. simple syrup, and then some like club, I think it's club soda, club soda? that goes on the top of it. Um, but this so is you not wanted, club So you wanted soda. the bubbly yes. cocktail. So yes. I made this with um, a gin that's finished in, um, what was it, uh, is it sassafras? Is oh. it called, right? Oh, wow. Right? I think it's called um, The simple syrup is passion fruit. Oh, wow. And then, of course, it's um, it's finished with uh, with uh, kava instead of uh, yes. club soda. So. We are doubling down on the liquor. Cheers. 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 And ladies and gentlemen watching us, you can see the gorgeous display in a highball glass with a lemon wheel uh, here. That's and, delicious, y'all. Oh, let me try. Oh, man. That turned out really well. Oh, it's going to be a good night. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love this. Could you, like, batch this and put it in the fridge? Okay, <laughs> no, I'm not supposed to do that. No, no. no we're I'm on our drinking. fitness journey. We we're, we're, not, we're just having, we're just letting, you know, not being too crazy. This weekend, we're having a couple you know, sips here and there. It's here you know, and there. We're doing that. So. Like, we didn't even go overboard on brunch this morning. No. Nope. Like, there wasn't a second cocktail, and I noticed. That. Nope. No, nope. I put it put it away. Put the glasses I away. I noticed that there wasn't a second nope. cocktail. And I was nope. like, no second nope. cocktail. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But I like the second cocktail. Mm-hmm. It gives me life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how are you? I'm feeling good. I feel I feel very accomplished for the week. I yeah. feel like I met some goals. I felt like I was really focused. I was sticking to my lists. Yeah. The lists were a, a plus. And I feel hydrated. I yeah, feel like I thing. was drinking my water in my jumbo big ass water bottle. <laughs> right. Trying to get to my 84 ounces every day. I did not do it every day. But, Hydrate people. But I got, you know, pretty close. I was oh, well over 40 ounces many times. Yeah, we worked out um, four out of the, or oh, five out of six days so far. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I had you, one day off. Yeah, oh, no, had, and now yeah, two. Yeah, Today two. Is two. But I had one day off when I wasn't feeling well. Um, right. No. Even that day, I still went out and walked. Did you walk that day? Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't work out. Yes, I work out. Yes, and I rode my bike today. Yesterday, I didn't work out. Um, That was my day off. So, and then I worked out. I worked out today already, and then I'll get to get to it tomorrow. I feel like I need to work out so I could close my ring. <laughs> yeah, because now Apple my watch. other rings are almost closed. Like my movement ring is closed today, and I haven't been able to close this movement ring all week. Okay? Right. Clearly, she's telling me that I'm not moving around enough. Right. And because we're in the house, like, where am I moving around to? Gotta, gotta walk. We're gotta get home. Out. I, but I mean, like, I, I walk the dog. You gotta take him a little further. I walk him around the block. Do you know so. he? You know he protests. <laughs> okay, yeah. he be like, please, just stop. I ain't walking no more, lady. Gotta get so, creative with that. But that. But then when I'm walking him, it also counts as far as the exercise ring. Yeah. 
So you know, double, double, double the uh, <sighs> the, the count. Yes, it, yeah, but hey, mm. one day I had like seventy nine hundred steps. I was so excited. Well, you're looking good. Thank you. You're pretty as always. Thank you, my handsome husband. Very, very pretty and a uh, beautiful woman. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm just regular for real. Mm-hmm. I'm just just like, regularly pretty thank, and beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, man. So here we are again, man. Um, so wait, how are you? Oh, me? Oh, me? Who cares about me? What are you talking we about? We care me? about you. We want to know how I'm you good, are. man. It was a good week this week, as you stated. Um, You know, it's good to get back to working out. Uh, I started the week off needing to lose six pounds. I now need, uh, excuse me, 16 pounds. Uh-huh. And now I'm down to needing to lose 10 pounds. And after this cocktail and like, you know, um, a little bit of bubbly with breakfast, you know, the most for breakfast, I might be, you know, needing to lose 11. Okay. Or something like that. But, you know, I'm good. I'm okay. good, man. The spirits are high. Feeling good. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm focused. Everything is good. Can I just tell you? That you have been smelling delicious. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, you know. You know like, thing out here. you be smelling lickable. Like, every day. <laughs> I told y'all in the last episode, <laughs> I had to try to step it up a little bit around Ooh, the house. Honey. <laughs> 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 hey, you know, I've revamped, I've revamped my whole you no know, smell good situation. Well, it's the working smell out well. goods are smelling magnificent. Smelling good or smelling good. Smelling smell good. In the house. <laughs> mm. Yeah, around the house. Ooh, just come out, just, just walk <laughs> by me like you smell good. That's all we do. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I appreciate it. I'm Thank you for noticing. Uh, uh, hey, listen. You know I've noticed because I'll be walking up on you. Like, <laughs> yeah, you like, do. <laughs> that was a hard up. sniffer. <laughs> we are not snorting coke on this show for people who are listening on the airwaves. So we did some um, recently. We had um, maybe a few weeks ago or so, a month or so ago. We decided, said, came up with this idea. Said, let's let's just go on to like some of the venues mm-hmm. that have live music, mm-hmm. and just look up the artists that are booked, and find someone someone that looks interesting that we've never heard of. Yes, and maybe research a little bit, but then go into the show and buy tickets and go to it. Hey. And just kind of go in blindly to, for the most part. Yeah. And we did that last night. It was so cool. Thank you so much for <laughs> You're that. welcome. That was like, first of all, you sent me an email or a text invite that we had tickets. A week out. A week out. We have a date night. Oh, scheduled. no, yeah. Like a few weeks out. Two, yeah. two, three weeks out. I said, we have date night on the 18th. Yeah, we have a date night on the 18th. And I was like, oh, okay, what am I going to wear? Look at you. What you got? <laughs> and then you sent me the actual confirmation of what it was. And I was like, okay. Okay, so what do I wear? Because every time we go here, I feel like I'm overdressed. Like, well, it's right. just like, you know, whatever. Right. But I love the Birchmere. It's really fun. It's really a cool Love venue. it there. Yeah. Good food. Good. Y'all, I had catfish. Yeah, that catfish. They're catfish. I switched it up this time, but yeah, you we won't get too far. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. Won't, okay, I won't get off. But I worked hard all week yeah, for that yeah, fried yeah, catfish did, last did. night, okay? You did. And it delivered. Yeah, it did. It did. So we. I got the quesadillas. Yeah, that you I got the quesadillas, but it was great. And we got to see Candace Springs. Yes. Yes, I looked her. Up, I looked mm-hmm. up the venue on Birchmere, and I was like, "Candace Springs, who is this?" And like, she's you know, light skinned curly haired, hair. neo soul looking yes. black woman, right? Just, I'm sorry, my 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 soul folks, my my army, my artists out there. I'm not trying to, you know, what I'm saying stereotype, stereotype y'all, but yes. I am a little bit. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, no, let me see what this what this is gonna be about. And um, went to her YouTube, and it was like. Oh, this is kind of like Ella Fitzgerald, you know, so jazzy. Jazzy, jazzy. Yeah, yes. jazzy. Mm-hmm. And I bought tickets. Yeah. $40 a piece, $39 a piece for this for these tickets. And that show was last night and we went. And so we get there and then what happens? <laughs> we walk in and we're like, are we in the right place cuz all we see are Hold on before you do it. Let me explain the Birchmere. Okay, right? the Birchmere. When you walk into the Birchmere, mm-hmm. there's a, a kind of like a holding. It's a full bar out there. Yep. It's not seats. It's seats, tables. Yep. So usually when you go there, it's a bunch of Negroes yep. hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, drinking, 
ordering drinks, doing yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then, so last night, completely empty. Yeah. You were even questioning if people were there, were but there. Was like the parking but lot the, was full. The parking lot was full because you know why? Everybody came an hour early and got their seats. So we get inside. What do we see, <laughs> Trina? Tell the people, we, please. Y'all, when we walked in, I thought we were at a bingo convention. <laughs> <laughs> because it was all older Caucasian people. Yes, old white people. And I was like, and we we talking about seventy, yo. Yeah, y'all. It was the, it was the the bingo crowd. Yes, it looked like the bingo people just transferred over to here. Right. Like and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? And here? everybody was in there, and they was eating and everything. They that's what I said. They had been there an hour early. They have they were having their dinner. We were so confused. We thought that maybe there's a whole different menu. Yeah, I did say. Is, <laughs> this, is, this, is this the same menu as usually? But yeah, because folks were eating. We we got there. It was seven. Yeah. No, it was like six forty-five. Six, something, yeah. Yeah, six forty-five. Because it didn't start until seven thirty. On a dot. On the dot. But let me tell you, them folks was in there and they was eating and drinking. And everything was happening. And I'm feeling like we late. And all the good seats, of course, up close to the stage. Yeah, taken. 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 Completely taken. And that's how it is at the Birchmere. It's like first come, first, first serve. Come, yeah. So basically, you do need to be like an hour you early, early if you want to get a good sleep. When we went to see <laughs> Eric Roberson, mm -hmm. we got there an hour early because we got decent we seats. And we got decent yeah. seats. And when we went to see Bilal, we had great seats. We had great seats, yeah. We had absolutely great yep. seats. But yes, yeah, so No, so that's that tells you, right? That demographic for those yes. two shows yeah. pretty much black. And it was sold out. And it sold out, yes. but you know, people be on that CPT. Oh yeah. Not these people Not last night. These people. <laughs> All the good seats was taken. Guys, I want y'all to realize what we're talking about. We're not talking about old white folks that you see on the street walking their dogs or exercising mm -hmm. you, know, like you see the old mm -hmm. man he's still no mm -hmm. these are people like these are some old folks we were yeah. we were the youngest people there probably yes. probably like close to it it might have been a couple of people there were a who, couple of couples couple of, yeah a couple mm -hmm. of people that like, she looks kind of young yeah. with the old dude with whatever the old dude. right right mm -hmm. yeah but we and we're you know what i'm saying we're in our late 40s yes and we were i'm almost youngest. 50 yeah he almost 50 <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing it really was because i'm i'm sitting there dumbfounded like this is gonna be good do they know her does everybody what? know her but they were all grooving we questioned everything we were yes. like Maybe she didn't sell tickets, mm -hmm, and they, they went to an old folks home and just got all these people to come here. Like, a, but there's no bus outside. Right, there's all cars outside. And I said to him, "Well, maybe these are the regulars that just." Come. And I'm like, they we had to buy tickets. We were trying to explain it away because like, none of it made sense. We it really so the demographic we just it, it just blew our minds because here's a young black woman, um, and here's all these old white folks, and she. Mm -hmm. was incredible phenomenal shout out to candace springs you have two new fans we are fans oh my gosh she was so good girlfriend was hitting it she, she was sing, saying yo. <laughs> everything and not only that but her energy she was telling jokes she yep. was funny quirky stage presence stage presence and she had an all-female band let's talk about that she did she had a bass yeah. player. Young girl. Young girl. Young lady. Young and lady. she had a, dr a drummer yeah, who was killing busy. It. Oh, my <laughs> she gosh. She got busy. I thought the gentleman that was sitting at the next table over was like her cousin or something. Yeah, the he way was he was clapping <laughs> and jumping up. and But he was also yelling when, when Candace was singing. Yeah. So he was just a fan. Like, yeah. he knew the songs. Yeah. Like, when she sang Trash, before she started singing Trash Man, he was like, yes, Trash Man. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what, what? Yo, the, um, the soulfulness in her mm -hmm. voice, the range. Oh, yes. Like, she was... She was so on point with yes, you know what I'm saying? The Ella, the all the way to the Sade's, yes. to the the, the Erica's, yes. the, it was like she is just like a mixture of all these dope oh. things. Yes. And the music was so good. It was so nice to go to an event like that, mm -hmm. a show like that and just kind of like it was a great date night. 
It was. Show. It, it was really. I, now, she said she was from Nashville. Yep. She was giving me New Orleans vibes. Like, I felt like she would be in a jazzy bar there yeah. in New Orleans, like, doing her thing. But she is something, and maybe she's about to blow up. Maybe that's why she's touring. Maybe so, she was yo. performing songs that she had, per- that she wrote. She was, she was. Maybe she already has blown up. And we don't and know. And we're not her demographic. Maybe. Because we saw her demographic yeah. last night. And they knew her stuff. They knew her stuff. She they might already be large. You and know what we saying? don't know. We don't listen to smooth jazz. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was insane. I gotta look I gotta look more on her YouTube and her Instas and see well, who's comments. Do your Trina stuff. thing, man. You I gotta, gotta do investigate. My investigation. <laughs> investigate. I'm an investigator. Yo, man. Dope idea. Yes. Great concept to just Go find someone you've never heard of. And just go. Do your little research. Go to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Make sure, okay, I, I probably watched five seconds of a YouTube clip mm-hmm. just to see what she was doing. I went to I her, said, I heard, cut it up. I hit the IG hashtag for yeah. this Spriggs. And uh-huh. I just said, okay, let me look at these hashtags of her. Okay, I see her. She's playing the piano. She's playing the piano. piano. Hit one of them. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah she can sing. All right. Fantastic artist. Definitely a sleeper that we didn't know about. We didn't know, but yo. let me tell you, she did give us the light flex by letting us know during one of her songs that she sang this song for Prince back in 2014. Yeah. So I was like, okay, mic drop. She's yeah, she's not yeah, new to this. Yeah, she been doing this. Yeah, and she was sassy too. She had she jokes. She was very, saying she was talking shit up on stage. Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> yes, yeah, she was. She did a Sade set. You guys, she sang yo. a couple of Sade songs, yeah. and I was like. Okay, I'm, I'm so <laughs> okay. I'm so. She did a jazzy set. She did a song that instantly took me back to my grandmother, and I started tearing up. Mm, yeah, you did because she was singing this song, and it just felt like something that my grandmother would love to listen to. Because yeah. she listened to Ella, she listened to all of them. May my may my nana rest in peace. Yes, and I felt it, and I was just like. Whoa! Yeah. Wait a minute. I was like, I feel like my grandmother is in the room yeah. right now. Oh, shout out to Candace Springs for that, yo. Thank you for that. That's impressive. Yeah. That was just and when she sang, "People make the world go round." Mm. Oh my gosh! Killed it. Killed it. Killed it, yo. So great Grin. to just go in blind and being open to going in blind. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. Let's do it. And I'm I ready. appreciate, like I said last night, I appreciate you for that. Because you can't just do that with anyone. Ah, please. And it takes a person with an open approach, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The open, open mind. mind mm-hmm. And just to be cool with like, yo, this 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 do something. It's this like happen. either this is gonna be really, really good or this is gonna be really, really bad. And we're in this together, and that's <laughs> and all that matters. Here. And I'm gonna have my catfish. You know <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. And like I was saying today, our entire relationship has been the, the based on adventure. Absolutely. From day one, the day we <laughs> met each other, the the day the first day we talked, two two forty plus people yeah. who are who need to go to work tomorrow morning <laughs> on the phone till two thirty in the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, so that's the first adventure. Yeah, that and is. then when we met in person, it was yeah. another adventure, a and six, it's been adventure after adventure every a every six show. course meal. Yeah. Um, with drinks, lots of drinks, and. Remember he made me that kava with the sugar cane yeah, and, the, and the the sugar can the sugar cube and the rosemary sprig yes. in it. He made me that drink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that wasn't a date. The, we it was. Just, well, it was, but it wasn't a planned date. Is what I'm saying. He was. He took me on a low key first. No, date. I didn't. I was okay. there to meet he, somebody. He was having a business meeting. Yes, I was. And invited and me along for the business meeting. It turned into a date. It did. And it because did. the chef was bored and wanted to cook. Yes. And I said, you might want to get over here. Yeah. This is about to And then we good. even have photos of the first day that we met. Yes, we do. How about that? We do. How many people get that? And not too many. Not too from many. photographers. Because yes. I was meeting with three, three yes, photographers. photographers. <laughs> we actually have photos of the first day we met in person. So, oh, yes, man. it has been an adventure. And I think that when you know that you meet that person that you can go on those adventures with, yeah, you know it. And it, it clicks. And you're just like, okay. So, you have a topic on the board saying dating in 40s. Yeah. So, we kind of going there at this point. <laughs> I guess we're going. There. So what, what did you want to Why did you write that on the board Okay so I you know as you guys know I watched 
Instagrams and I watch the TikToks and I watch a lady talking about how dating in your 40s plus to 50s is just pure trash right now. <laughs> like there is just nothing. She's like either they need to go in the hospital in a geriatric. Oh my goodness. She said or they still in the streets in the clubs and they chasing the 20 year olds. Yeah. And she was just like too. I don't know how to meet my and, and the one woman I watched she was like she was really uh, she was religious in, in a sense but mm-hmm. she was just talking about she was in her car and she was like where can I find my boy? Her what? Boaz. Boaz. From the Bible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to find her oh, Boaz. Oh, man. And I was Damn. just like, and it made me watch it some more because I'm like, really? We talking about Boaz on Instagram? Hilarious, like, really? And she was just saying that she had, she had just gone on like a couple, she's been on a couple of dates. Mm-hmm. And there's one gentleman, she was for sure needed some heart medication. She's like, he was panting, he was sweating. Panting. <laughs> she was like, he was panting, he was sweating, and it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't right. And then she said, and then this other guy, he came, he had a do rag and gold chains. And she's like, oh I think my it goodness. Was, she said she thought it was fake gold with a fake bling that he had right, on. Right. And she was like, out there. And she's like, you're like 45 years old. What are you doing with this fake bling oh on? Like, goodness. who are you doing this for? And I was just thinking, like, wow, I know it's not easy. No. I, it's not easy. Because I, I remember being 43, 44, uh-huh. and being like, oh, hell no. Nah, this is some bullshit. You know, for me, the, the upside of dating in my 40s what, was us. that I know within a very short amount of time uh-huh. if – what this is going to be. <laughs> See, for women, it's different. Okay? I know quickly. For women, you know, you're trying to give a brother a chance. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it's we're, different. We're, it, it, is, trying, it really is different. It's not the cut, cut dry, you know, oh, nah, that ain't it. Bye. Right. You know, we try to give a brother a chance. Like, okay. But but even, okay, so I got to gotta give a little pushback because at this age, yeah. We not only do we know if this person, this representation of whoever this is, mm-hmm. if this is a go or not, mm-hmm. we also can easily tell if they're faking it. Oh, rep, being a re, putting your representative out now, first. Now you had those folks out there that's really good at lying and stuff like that. That's, right. that's okay. They, they get Gross. over on everybody, but the other folks you can tell like okay, you, yes. they, you see the imperfection, the the uh, yeah. in uh, in uh, inaccuracies, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. The, well, stuff inc- ain't the adding inconsistencies. up. Yeah, stuff ain't adding up. Stuff ain't adding up. Okay, stuff will not be adding up. You be like, wait, but you said. um you was on a trip in Miami, right? <laughs> but your Instagram said you was um, somewhere else, and you was with some chick, and you was on a date, but you wasn't really showing her. Hey. And who took all those pictures? Yeah, who took the pictures? <laughs> who was you with? So you know that's the other side of dating in your forties. But I, I really don't. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. It is. It is. And and women at this age, we we ain't really for the bullshit, and we ain't trying to have kids. Most of us have already done that. Done, been there, done that. College. Kids are in college. You're in a different phase of life. We're in the I just want to have a good time phase of life. <laughs> That's okay? what it is. I just want to have a good time. Mm. Okay, my kids. Because you done gave up on on you done, you done gave up on the whole um, you know actual relationship and stuff like that. No, I mean like you want to be in a relationship and have a good okay, time. Okay, gotcha. And not have the drama, yeah. not have the fake shit, yeah. not have the uh, uh well um you was dis- you disappeared cuz you was out with somebody else shit. My phone my phone my phone, fell, my phone, my phone died. fell under my um my car seat. My phone fell under my car seat. I lost my phone. I left my phone. <laughs> yeah. But my phone I should have said that, yo. Shout out to our homegirl. We ain't gonna say her name. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, seriously. Not personal, yo. Yeah, but seriously, we're past that phase. Like, at this point, it's like, you should be at this state of enjoyment. Yeah. We're exhaling at this point. We ain't been through some shit at some point. Right. We ain't got through some shit, and now we're on the other side, and I just want to... Have a partner and enjoy life. Yeah, you want to be happy. Yes. You want to be happy and mm-hmm. you want to live um, a, f- a fulfilled life and you you really, like, you don't want to be alone, which is a, a serious thing that people act like it's not an issue, but well, it really is. Well, let me push is. back on that. 
Because at this point, someone would rather be alone than deal with the bullshit. Some men would rather be alone. Some people prefer yeah. to be alone. Because I don't think it's a good idea just to get with somebody because you don't no, want to be alone. It's not. It's not. That is not the driving. But you have to acknowledge that. Like, you know what I'm saying? We are not meant as human beings. We're not meant to. You have your outliers. Right. Of course, you have people who prefer to be. I have an aunt who I've never seen with a man or a woman my entire life. Mm-hmm. She just prefers to be alone. She's quiet. She's yes. on. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um. So you have those whatnot, but mm-hmm. I think in I think my outlook on that, like as a whole, people mm-hmm. need companionship. People need to interact with people. Okay. No one. You don't want to die alone. No, nobody wants to die alone. You know what I'm saying? Or, tr- or to people, be alone before you die. But there's some people whose behaviors are going to put them in a space where oh, they're going to wind up absolutely. by themselves because you out here acting a straight ass. Absolutely. Treating people like shit. And ain't nobody going to want to be with you. And you're going to end up alone. Alone. And that goes back to what I was saying. Like Waiting on your kids to take care of you. This. <laughs> and they might not even want to be with your ass you, at this point. You, I'm trying to tell you, man. Yeah. Listen. you know, and that, But that goes back to, to what I'm saying. People don't. They don't acknowledge that shit. And, mm-hmm. you know, they act like, you know, like when we were young, we act like we're going to live forever mm-hmm. or we're we're invincible. Like When I was 20 something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're just fucking doing crazy yeah, stuff. That, that shit. And, and you, as you get older, you got to knock that shit off. <sighs> and there are some <laughs> gentlemen in their 40s and 50s who haven't figured that out yet. Haven't figured that shit out yet. No, they're still doing dumb shit. Still chasing behind the dump, the, the nonsense out there. They got brand new babies on the way at 50. Mm. <laughs> That's a red flag. <laughs> For the Damn, tail, ladies, son. if you meet a dude, he's like, yeah, I got a six month old. What? <laughs> yeah, all y'all fellas out there, I didn't know she was going to say that yet. My bad. Let me talk to her. What I'm going to talk to what, her. What I say? Oh, what's, can't. What's no, you say nothing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you say nothing crazy. Because I'm thinking like 50 something, you got a newborn. And it's like, mm, sir. <laughs> 50 with a newborn. <laughs> All right, so you sent me something the other day. <laughs> I don't know why Instagrams and Facebook be sent be putting this in my algorithm. Instagram and Facebooks. <laughs> um, I don't know where we're gonna go with this, but we're gonna I go with it. You know what I'm saying? So let me let's play this real quick and see what. Need a man. I'm intentionally creating margin in my life, in my calendar, in my schedule to create space for a relationship. <sighs> that is important to me. Talk. Who us? Because I desire love. I'm lovable. Yes. I'm loving. Yes. I'm a phenomenal lover. To a six two man, I get you. If you six two <laughs> and above, right? I need a man. I desire a man. I want a man. I'm not walking around with the energy of I don't need a man. Now, if it were just based on material possessions or on finances and stuff on paper, do I require the financial support of a man? Yeah. No, I do not require that. Do I desire to be supported by a man? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I desire to be held down by a man? Absolutely. Yeah. Held and held down yeah, I got you. by a man? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I don't think that we were designed to go through life alone. Right. I think that we were designed for companionship. Yeah. Oh, she damn. just said she said what I just said. She said what you just said. She said <laughs> she said what I just she, said. She really did. I only listened to the beginning of that. I hadn't even listened all the way through, so I didn't know that it was gonna go there. She That's said the crazy. same thing, yo. She just said the same thing that you just said before. <laughs> you, you are you is that unsettling for you? I mean. <laughs> I mean and I'ma say this. I I am forty seven years old. And for a majority of my youthful life, I was told that I don't need a man. Right. Period. And that's a narrative that has permeated throughout our the fabric of our culture, right? Mm-hmm. And for some reason, this narrative, we're going to do a whole different segment on narrative sayings mm-hmm. and stuff that... Yeah. Yeah, and this needs to go with it. This does. This needs to go with yes, that. We were does. talking about that. But um yeah, you when you look at things from a human perspective, not necessarily a man or a woman, because at that point we're talking about roles mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't need a man to do this for me. I can do whatever. I got the money, I hire somebody. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about that. 
as human beings, right? Are you are some of you folks out there trying to tell me that we don't desire or need, not even desire, need companionship? Here's what I will say. I now realize as an adult, as a developed adult, that the phrases that phrase that was said to me was told to me by a woman who had five children. She was a homemaker. She relied heavily and financially on her husband to support her. Mm. She didn't have an education past high school. She, again, had to raise children and do all these things. However, most of her financial well-being was reliant on her husband. So in me, in my rearing, and my upbringing, I was told, you need to go out and get an education. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to sustain your life on your own, be educated, have your career, and you don't need a man to rely on to do all of those things and for you to live a prosperous life. Right. So I understand that this was coming I get that. from this was coming from a generation who was told that they had to get married in order, you know, for their life to be. This is also coming from a generation who was were taught that and then when they bought into it, mm-hmm. they had to deal with men who had whole other families in the next town. That part. They had to deal with men mm-hmm. who had crazy babies on the side. And they didn't leave because and they couldn't. They didn't leave because they couldn't mm-hmm. or it just didn't make as much sense to do that or whatever it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're also dealing with women not having their place, their their they're just due in a workplace, which we're still there now. Yes. But it was even worse back then. So you have all these factors. Yes. That, you know what I'm saying? So that will lead a woman to telling a younger woman in her family, yo, get your shit together. Yes. Make sure you work on you so Mm -hmm. you don't end up like me. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I get it. I understand it, but it does, it does do a disservice because I felt like, um, both of my grandfathers were great providers. Right. Period. And I feel like at, at the end of the day, I want to have a partner that also is a provider. Like right. I don't and, and I don't see why I shouldn't be able to have that. So when you tell a child over and over again or young, you know, adolescent, you don't need, you don't need, you don't need. Mm-hmm. But the picture that you see is of unity somewhat. Right. You think right. because you don't know all the behind the scenes until you turn 20 and then you find out all this stuff like word that was going on. Right. But that's a whole other thing. But it's it does a disservice to us because then we are we have this this tape recorder p- playing in the back of our heads that you makes it really no hard right. to, you know, partner up with someone because you're thinking that you don't need them. And yeah. you push that out there. Yeah. And I think it's prevalent in the music that we hear. I mm-hmm. think it's prevalent in the messages that are sent out in entertainment, period. It can be film, whatever. You don't need a man. You can be successful. You can have your business. You can't have it all. So you got to pick one or the other. All those things. And so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, it, and it goes on some both sides, too, like for, for, for the entertainment, right? And, and the industry, they're pumping the narrative. They always pump the narrative that don't trust these hoes, these bitches ain't shit, boom, 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 all that stuff, whatever. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, real it's, a, it's crazy. a whole other conversation as well. That's you know another saying? conversation. But, and but, it's a divisive thing that keeps it us is. from being units. It is. They it clone, keeps they, us they, completely they, from they, being units. They clone Tyrone. Hey, every city. <laughs> they clone Tyrone. Every city. You know what I'm saying? So, but back to the um the you don't need no man thing coming from you know those those folks and whatnot. The real message really is you don't give up hope, right? right? However, make sure you make yourself important mm-hmm. and work on yourself. Yes, build yourself up. Don't give up hope. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, you. You, you just don't want to teach that and preach that. Mm-hmm. But that's what the whole message of you don't need no man is really telling you just just give up. Like mm-hmm. it's because they ain't, they ain't gonna do shit for you. Yeah. It's telling you you don't need them because they can't do shit for you that you can't do just for yourself. And that's, yeah. It's so you can get all those degrees. Ugh. You get all those degrees and you get all the accolades. But one thing about them is that, and this goes for a woman or a man. 
Yeah. Is that them motherfuckers ain't gonna keep you warm at night? <laughs> is it <that> true? <laughs> They're not is. gonna keep you warm at it night. Is true. Your money is not gonna keep you warm at night. Yeah. It's yeah. not gonna tell you, it's not gonna look at you, it's not gonna it's not gonna touch you on your shoulder. Yeah. It's not gonna rub your hair. Yeah. It's not gonna tell you that you they love you. It's not gonna do those things. Yeah. Those, those things it's not gonna accomplish that. Yeah. And one day you might realize that and it might be a little too late it's unfortunate it's really unfortunate i just you know we we need each other period both both we need each other it's an interchangeable thing and i need you trina i need you <laughs> i need, I need you, you too i need you too <sighs> <laughs> yes so it's just I, I i've made it a point of not to send those messages to my own children However, they may have their own interpretations of relationships and divorce, thanks to their parents. Mm -hmm. um, both of them say they're not having kids. So I don't know. <laughs> but maybe they will get married. We'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, back to the dating in your 40s thing. Yeah. It's like you meet somebody and you see that she has been pumped. That that narrative has been pumped into her head. Mm -hmm. And immediately you're like, she belongs to the street. <laughs> But what about the dudes? She belongs to the streets. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but come on, if you're forty something, how can you still belong to the streets? We we getting up in age, the bones start creaking. There's only so much you can do out there in the streets. You ever hear about? <clears throat> excuse me. You ever you, you see um, a boxer in a boxing match getting the shit kicked out of them? Yeah. For some reason, they don't give up. They, they don't, don't stop. They don't. You know why? Because their brain, their mind is mm. strong. Mm. And telling them that you can, can you can continue. Meanwhile, we're at home watching the TV, and we can see your ear hanging off of your head. I'm saying, throw in the towel. And we're like, nigga, you <laughs> need to stop. But the brain is telling you something else. And that's the same I believe really? that's the same thing. These niggas are their brain, their minds telling them that if I if I cop this and look, I'm not I'm not against the range. I love a Range Rover. I might cop another one one day <laughs> if I cop this range, right? Uh -huh. Um, and 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 drive up and down this street a zillion times, uh -huh. then that's gonna impress somebody, and I might get some ass out of this, and that is what I value in life. This is what these niggas' minds are telling them. I'm telling you, yo, this is this is a thing. It still exists. What? You got you got dudes. I'm 40. Well, what am I? Well, I turned 50 in two years, right? Yeah. Two, a year and a half. You got cats my age still going to South Beach, trying to do the South South Beach thing. We are so past South and, Beach. <laughs> we are. Too am I off here? No, you're not because I have heard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm not making this up. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's not that it's not that I've been to South Beach and I see it happening. Right. It's that I know this exists because I can identify that guy. <sighs> I can identify the woman who believes she don't need no man. You can identify these things. And this is like I said, the value of being able to date in your forties is that you can identify shit easy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Trina. <laughs> it's rough. Hey, we got each other. We good. Yeah, we good. We good. We good. But it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. I just, yeah. Um, that's crazy. Um, but prayers, prayers, thoughts and prayers. We had, we had thoughts and prayers now. <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Come on, man. We can't just get the thoughts and prayers. I, I want to try to shut the conversation I down. I, I just don't know what to say. Like Amen. I don't know what to say to the to the Range Brothers. Like what you doing? The Range Brothers. No, don't do that to the guy. Okay, I okay, love I a Range Rover. It. Range Rover is okay. a very nice vehicle. I'll say Benz. I love. No, it's <laughs> not about the Benz or the Range. It's not okay. about that specifically. Okay, it's well, just an example. It's to anyone who thinks that their material yes are going Boom. to get them some sort of whatever. Because if I see you with certain material things, I'm thinking. Mm, so you in debt. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my brain is going. Yeah. My brain is going so. You look at that range and say, look. Mm, that, that car payment is like. <laughs> 
so what do you own? Do you have a mortgage or do you live in the mamas? Like what, you know, what is going on? Or the brothers who be like, oh, my mom lives with me. Right. Anyway. Yeah, you stupid, yo. <laughs> you stupid, yo. Okay, that was a little too toxic. It's a lot of but it's a lot of flags out there. I just yeah. So cool. just because a brother drives a Range Rover doesn't mean that he owns some bullshit. This is I want to pull that out there because okay. I'm a former Range Rover driver. Okay. And and I know people with Range Rovers. Okay. Right? So and we're not we're not and discriminating like against. It's not about that cars. It's no about sorts. How it's about the value, the uh-huh. value you place in those things. But if you got a man purse, I'm looking at you. Oh man, that's all. <laughs> Whew, God. A mess. A mess. So let's let's talk about let's, let's, <laughs> let's get out of this. We talked about the purse already last episode. I know I was bringing Yo, it back. I was bringing it full bringing circle. Bringing it back. <laughs> Yeah, that, enough on the fellas, all right? Enough uh, okay. on the fellas. Okay. Black woman delegation mm. trying to pull Listen, fast one over the here. The black woman delegation been having a rough week in this house. There's been some conversations. So I wrote something on the board a mm-hmm. while back, and it's it's the value of happiness. That's all I wrote. Oh. Hmm. So it's really the value of being able to um, define what makes you happy. Okay. And mold your life around it uh, to an to an effect like having that being the driving force right in your mm-hmm. life. And I'm not talking about just a particular thing, but just what uh, what brings you fulfillment and happiness. Okay. Like true happiness, right? Right. Because again, like buying a material item, mm-hmm. right? It gives you some type of, um, you know, some type of rush, I guess, right? There's right. some, there's some actual scientific thing that happens in your body when you like shop or yes. some shit like that, yeah. right? That that's cool, but I'm talking about true, actual fulfillment. Where if you die, mm-hmm. if you if you know if you if you if you could see a death coming, you know that I'm living, I'm happy. Am I mm-hmm. like how you know as the older I get? The more that the more weight that holds, and me just realizing what makes me happy, and I just wonder how many people actually think about that and and weigh that. Have you ever? Do you ever really think about that and put it in perspective? Well, yes, and I don't always try to bring it back to this, but I always bring it back to living in Florida. Mm-hmm. When you realize, when you find a state like of being. Where, okay, I just need to be outside. I need to be in the elements. I need to be able to, you know, take in the breeze, the ocean on the daily and the sunshine, the sun on your body and just having peace. Right. Like no drama and things like that. And, And then you realize what happiness is. It can be the smallest things that you have in your life that bring you pure happiness it doesn't cost anything it's just like okay this state right here that i'm in is pure happiness right i don't need anything else i'm here right and this is it and people have to really take time out sometimes it's it's it's, um mindfulness you have to be mindful of what your body is responding Mm -hmm. to and when you're in a place or something that throws you off and you need to remove yourself from it You you have to pay attention to those things because your body will tell you first before yes. anything else, and then you have to realize what's important to you in life. You, yes, you, you start ranking some things. You start ranking people. Right. You start ranking uh, environments, and you're like, you know, I'm not gonna be in that space anymore. I'm not gonna mess with so so. Hang out with this person, hang with that because the energy is off and and it's draining. Mm-hmm. And where I am right now in my life, I just want peace and happiness. Straight up. Like it, it, it's so important, man. Um, you know, it's just important to identify yeah. that thing. You know what I'm Me saying, too. and and not just take it for granted. Um, pursuing it, you know what I'm saying, and just incorporating it into your life. Some people are chasing money right now. People chasing money all the time. They're chasing a dollar amount. They're chasing this thing. They want to get to this certain number. And even in the pursuit of that chase, 
you're unhappy. Yes. And then you get to this certain, I remember conversations about, oh, I just want to make six figures. When I make six figures, I'm just, <laughs> when I'm here at six figures, I'm going to be, oh, da, 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 da. and then you get to six figures, you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> My it, bills no, it's, ain't changed. No, it's just a number one piece it's of paper. It's a number that don't mean shit. No, yeah. And, and I could be broke. And happier yep. than making whatever. Yeah. And so it is. It is mindfulness. It is awareness. It is being tuned in to things. And some of the simplest things can bring you happiness. And also tuning out outside chatter, right? Because mm-hmm. you have a person who, uh, let's, let's say Red Fox. Red mm-hmm. Fox, right? Yeah. Sanford and Son, all that, right? Fred G. Fred G. <laughs> Um, he died, right? What people will say, he died broke. Yeah. Right? So, and I don't know. I'm just using this as an example. I don't know about his lifestyle or his life or his level of happiness and all that kind of stuff before he passed, right? But let's say this man, he spent his money the way he wanted to. He was happy in what he was doing mm-hmm. and fulfilled and he died happy. Died happy. Who who the fuck are you yeah. to sit here and, and look at him and say he mm-hmm. didn't have a uh, five hundred thousand dollars in his bank account, so he his life was a failure. Right. right, right, right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. to hell with what outside people think. Yeah. Right? You find out and this is a un, this is a, a ongoing theme in this on this um, podcast. Uh, yeah. and straight up. You just find out what makes you happy and do that shit. Yeah, and you know it can be very much not the popular option. It could be, it could be very much not it the popular option. It could be very option. unpopular and people looking at you like, what the fuck? And you, if you know that it works for you, then you got to do it. I get money. I understand. You, but you know, money affords you luxuries in life, yes, right? You does. can go it to on vacation things. every month or yes. every month. You know what I'm saying? All these things. I get money. Yes. Um, you know, we like material things. We mm-hmm. do. You know what I'm saying? I like to buy sneakers and shit like that. So yeah. I, I get that, but you just have to put it in perspective. Yeah. You have to put it in perspective. Yeah. What brings you happiness and what brings you joy, what brings you nirvana, you got to sit and, and, and be at peace with that. And it and I, I know that I've chosen things that are not very popular and people don't get it and they don't understand it, but it's not for them to understand. You said Nirvana just now? I did. I said Damn. Nirvana. They teach you that in Howard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I learned about Nirvana and Howard, yes. Um, but in my yoga practice, you know. Ooh, Nirvana. Nirvana you you got to find That's that. That's a sexy word. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so... um. The earth is cooking. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> July was the hottest month on record. Straight up. Ever. On earth. Mm. The earth is cooking. It is cooking us. And we don't know what is happening. The animals are tripping. Are tripping. <laughs> tripping. <laughs> The an- the sharks are coming up on shore. Yo. The sea lions are slapping folks and pushing folks bears, out of the way. Bears swimming out of the ocean. Bears in Destin, Florida. I don't even understand that shit. Where did that bear swim from? I don't know where he came from. I didn't even know Florida had bears. Can we talk about that? But the, nobody, no one saw him go into the water. No, they saw him in the water this and then is- he ran out. <laughs> Like, there's, dude. A, there's a hurricane heading to California for the first time ever. ever? It's they supposed have a to be on the tropical East Coast. storm warning shit in California. For LA. Like and and then Hawaii had a hurricane. Oh, man. The and then fires. they had those horrible fires in Maui. I pray for all of those people. They're still finding bodies. Oh man. Um the earth is is I I've said this and we joke about this that we are at the end of days, but there is something going on right now. I mean, when COVID happened, the world kind of stood still, right? You know, the emissions were down, the mm-hmm. pollution was down, all of those things. The earth kind of had a moment, a reprieve. So it's like the earth was like, hey, y'all, y'all see, y'all see this? This is what I'm trying to show you. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm gonna start shit back up for you, yeah, yeah. and then we got and right back to it. We got back to it, and here we are. We're cooking. The animals are tripping. You got orca <laughs> whales knocking ships Yo, and shit. Like the whales, man. The whales are. I ain't trying to go on a cruise. Yo. Nah, I'm good. I know I was talking about going on a cruise for Me my fifty, but the whales are tripping. The whales are tripping. You got to see what these whales going to do before. People I go on a are having serious close encounters with sharks. Um, they're going to the beach. They're going to start going legs. Ocean City. All kind of stuff. And where are the aliens? Y'all could come out now. Whatever <laughs> y'all got. We know we good. We know we good. Just come out now and maybe settle things out a little bit. Because this, <laughs> this is going crazy. I don't know oh, what gosh. to expect next. I said we got about one to two summers before they tell us we got to stay in there. Oh, summer. man. We got to stay in all summer? If it's too hot. Damn, son. If it's too hot for us outside and the air quality is bad, and you already know the ozone layer been cracked. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> they put new holes in the ozone you layer. You know, so what what are we doing at this Man. point? What are scientists going to project for us? Yo, anybody out there got some answers? Somebody let us know. Some of you scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Please drop us a comment. And tell us what's going on in the earth. Real scientists and internet scientists. Yes, we'll take all we'll, we'll take <laughs> all y'all. Yo. The internet scientists are fun. <laughs> we like you. They're the best ones. They're the best ones. But I mean, seriously, like if you've got all of this madness going on in the earth, like what is next? I already, summers extend into fall. The temperatures are warm. We have warmer falls. Yo. No snow in the winter. Listen. It, it's all kind of changed. We're playing, we playing the uh, rooftop cookouts in October. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A Halloween cookout. You know okay? what I mean? Because it's, it's not, it, we're not getting cold weather like we used to. Nope. I don't know if the earth is no longer spinning on us. I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening with the Earth's core because remember they said the Earth's core is going to be the starting point of any you know combustion right that happens. But are we at the end of days? I don't know, man. Listen, I I, I don't want no shark rolling up on me. We just trying to get to episode fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yeah. I'm telling you, them sharks are gonna grow legs soon. Listen, them sharks, no, they're not going. No, don't legs, say yo, they're gonna evolve. Oh my gosh, don't they're say gonna, that. They're gonna come right up on the beach. They're gonna start walking up. <laughs> straight to the boardwalk. Oh my gosh, I'm not ready. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Mm-mm, it's crazy to see lions. Did you see one of them sea lions was coming up on the beach in California? Yo, trying to attack people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, aggressive. Get your ass off the beach. It's my beach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little punk ass bikini. I don't know what's gonna happen next, but the earth is cooking. It's cooking. Yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to turn to our segment of what we're watching. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is my favorite segment because <laughs> we watch a lot of TV. Like I say, well, not a lot, but it's like one of the things that we do. It's one of our things. One of our we things. We got shows. And I, we got shows that we watch. And I, having an iPhone, and I'm an Apple TV subscriber. And when I first got my um, iPhone, I can't remember what year it was, and it was around the COVID time, I had Apple TV for free. So I just started delving into different shows and different topics because they have so much on there. Like if you've not checked it out, there's a lot to check out on Apple TV. So worth it. Original programming. Plus you can do other stuff. But one of the original shows that we watched that we've watched two seasons from the beginning. Yeah. Swagger. Swagger. Che, che, che. Yo. Yo, shout out, shout out to Swaggy. Shout out to KB. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So this is a Kevin Durant peru- produced production. production. Yeah, I believe so. Um, his mom was in the episode. Remember yeah. the starting episodes yep, and yep. things? Um, Swagger. Swagger's dope. It's a dope show about a basketball team in the DMV. Yep. Period. Yep. That's it. AAU. AAU. Swagger team. First, they were little itty bitty little middle slash high school middle schoolers. Yep. On the AAU. Little kids. Little kids. And then this season. It's two they, seasons, right? Yeah, this is two seasons. Mm-hmm. And now this season, it transitioned into the prep high school. Yep. Um, and it was a really great 
situation. Ice Cube son. Ice Cube son. We don't, what, O'Shea we got, Jackson Jr. Is it? Is he's a junior? I think he's a junior. Okay, yeah, because he stands on his own at this point. I, I feel bad calling him Ice Cube son. Right. But he stands on his own. Like I, you don't yes. even look at him like that. Yeah. He, he did a really good in this. He's in this, a uh, great, series. great. I think that's his name. Look on your phone. Check yeah. <laughs> look on. Look I on my phone. O'Shea, I think it's O'Shea Jackson Jr. But I could be wrong. Okay. Um, but I think he's like O'Shea. But this show talks about these kids, this basketball team, and their unity and their brotherhood and the different issues that they talk about regarding athletes regarding family supporting these athletes yeah regarding thinking about their future um travel league basketball yeah uh all the things girls playing basketball girls yep. issues in basketball scholarship single moms single moms mom who dad's does, trying to get back into the, you know dads who leave kids and then want to come back yep um coaches serving as parents yeah. surrogate parents yeah, yeah. um parents yeah. being imprisoned yep we talk they, they talk got about it. that they got it all they in talk there, about yo. everything they even do like the covid thing like real time almost. the covid like, thing was real time yeah. because remember when the show was happening the first season at the end, COVID. Yeah. COVID had kicked in. So this is so is it two seasons or three? Or was then? it three? I can't remember. Uh, let me look on my phone. Yeah, we watched, we watched, we watched. We've been this watching from it end. from beginning to end. And when I told you this this last episode, I was crying. I felt like these was my kids. Okay. I felt like Yeah, these. I think it's only two seasons. Okay. It's two seasons, yeah. It's only two seasons. Yeah, yes. and he is O'Shea Jackson uh, uh, Jr. Jr. I yeah. thought so. Okay. Um dope show, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? For black black folks for sure. It's mm-hmm. like a it's 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 a black quote unquote black show, right? Yes. But it's a show that anybody can enjoy. Um they and they definitely get into all those things. So many topics, and that's yeah. the thing about the show. Yes. That's the, the the one of the biggest things. They tackle topics on this show. They really do. They you know what I mean? Yeah, Isaiah Hill is playing Jace. Yeah, Should. Jace. Jace is the um the star basketball player, yes. and he's kind of like the the center of the show, right? Yes. It's, it's really centered around him. Yes, and um his journey through you know what I'm saying his childhood and, mm-hmm. and going into a, a being a young man mm-hmm. playing basketball, basketball being and the being center of his life, being yeah, a star, being a star, you and know the I mean? expectations of him to get into the NBA. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, how kids talk about, oh, when I grow up, I'm, I'm playing in the NBA and how these AAU kids are are searched and sought after yeah. and how colleges are looking at them really early, how rankings and playing at prep schools, yeah. how that impacts your ranking. McDonald's, McDonald's All-American is tackled in mm-hmm. here. All those things, winning the high school classic, all that stuff. Yep. Um, trying to get the states and all that. Mm-hmm. Even um, a sec- sexual predator is tackled. Oh man, they did all that shit. Yep. Yep. All that is, and it was just it's it's a great series. It's on Apple TV. Um, if you're looking for something, two seasons are there. You can definitely watch it and enjoy these and and become attached to these kids. Like I right. was attached. To the kids and I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> the last episode the was crazy. The last episode had me messed up. That was crazy. Also, who's in it? Quavon Janae Ellis. She is the girl basketball player, the equivalent of Jace. She is the superstar girl basketball player in Maryland, and she has these dreams of going to play for Maryland and, to play and basketball. WNBA. And the WNBA. So it's just it's a great show. It's so worth it. And it's great to see this cast of, of brown folks, you know? Yeah. Let us know if y'all watch. Yeah, y'all it, it, watch is, it is it's definitely dope to see that. I love it. I feel it. like it's slept on. And it's, for us, I feel like that too. And it's in the DMV. Like I know everybody doesn't have Apple TV, but <sighs> this is so worth mm. watching. This is premium TV. It's so good. Listen, listen, y'all, listen, listen. There's no excuse. One of the things I learned from my wife mm. is if you have multiple emails, put them to use. <laughs> Go ahead and sign up for Showtime. <laughs> sign up for Apple TV. <laughs> sign up for Paramount. Get your free. Get your free on. Get your free on. They're going to give you seven days bare minimum. Thir- or, yeah, 30. or 30. Or 30. 
Yeah, seven. You gonna get that time. And then if you got like five emails, you could do switch it. Then you get another thirty days, and then you get another thirty. And you get another 30 days. See, the key is when you have a series that you like. And so yes. once you do it, you wait a you little. Can, see, the, I know you. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> but I'm going to get hooked on the series and then I'm going to have to pay for it. No. So when your series is done and mm-hmm. it, the next season comes back, let it get to the ep- episode six. Yeah, okay. then, subscribe then subscribe with the new email. The new catch up on the, on the new joint. By the yes. time you catch up, you'll be on episode eight. Hey. And then you only have about three or four more left. Hey. You good money. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we do it all the time. We do it all Oh, man. Although, Hilarious, yo. Uh, although I am paying for Apple TV. Well, you know, yeah. some of them, you know, they, you had the main stage or whatever. So, And I pay for Apple TV because it's great on flights. Like, yeah. I yeah, have watched We TV. The, um, I'm, I'm sorry, We we the company yeah but we the people whatever they had a, a series on them um the morning show yeah premium watch it right you jennifer aniston that, uh uh reese witherspoon and steve carell is that his name steve carell yeah, steve yeah, Carell. so yeah yes all of them virgin dude. oh my goodness the morning show is like the equivalent of what happened with matt lauer Mm. On on a Today Show, and it is like, <gasps> word is that what he did? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so worth it. You will. I I'll watch it again with you if you want to watch it. I watch. I, mean, I, I think we'll, you we'll should. have to figure it out. We'll um, have to figure it out. I'm what down. else? We're watching a wine series right now. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we oh. gotta save them oh, for oh, the. Oh, for, you know what I'm saying other weeks. Well, other I'm weeks. Just, there, there's great some shows. There's some dope shows out there. There are some dope shows on Apple TV. Totally worth it. If y'all have questions, y'all need guidance, reach out. Just we'll help, we help the people. Ask for recommendations. We are here for the people. Recommendations are us. Yo, if I told what what's one of your biggest problems um with sleeping? <laughs> like as far as comfortability and stuff. Uh, you mean like the pillow situation? Or maybe maybe or just like in general. Like you get hot. Oh yeah. I, I get hot. You get hot, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm kicking the covers off, and then all of a sudden I'm getting cold. <laughs> like it's it's, it's, it's it's either one. So, if I told you that there's a mattress mm-hmm. that has a cooling technology that will keep you ten degrees cooler and whatnot, we gonna buy it. But it's six thousand oh, dollars. Shit. But it'll probably be the last mattress we ever buy. Oh my gosh. What would you say? Let's do it. <laughs> 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 yo, I didn't expect that. <laughs> That's hilarious, yo. I'm just saying, I be hot. You be hot. I be hot, and then it get cold when the AC kick in. I'm like, oh shit, I'm cold. But I be hot. Like all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, this is what I need. I need a fan blowing on me. I need something in the corner that blows. Or if you had a mattress that said, Trina, I'm gonna hug you and keep you cool. Tonight. I think it it needs to keep me cool, and it needs to be a sleep number so that it can also elevate me so that my head is higher and i don't have to be having a million pillows under my neck to keep me up that's that's, that's small that's small small yeah i I like it you like that i like it i was curious Uh, i'm hey because you know me tell me more (laughs) (laughs) it's gotta be king size though okay oh no we're getting a king size bed it has to be king we we messed up we moved into the space it was like oh yeah we're gonna no we need more space and we don't want to uh you know listen we don't want to take up the whole bed no we're getting a king size bed i don't give a shit if we have to step onto the bed to get into the main part of our bedroom (laughs) Listen, cause this shit right now, oh my goodness. Yeah, you stupid, yo. Listen. Yeah, Trina like to put her leg on top of mine, but she don't like my leg on top of hers. Cause his leg is heavy, yo. Yo, no, that's some <laughs> bullshit, yo. <laughs> sneaks Negro here. Don't forget my arm. I like she, to put my arm on you. Put the, her arm on top of my arm. <laughs> Yo, are we really gonna talk about bed wars right now? We can talk about it if you want to talk about oh, it. Oh, really? Let's do it. Listen, listen. I performed a, um, okay. I performed an experiment when you were gone. When you took Kennedy to school, uh-huh. I was like, all right, well, I was in bed and I was like, oh, I'm about to crash. I'm about to go to sleep. So I put my glasses mm-hmm. and it was something else on the bed mm-hmm. on your side of the okay. bed. Okay. I slept. 
And when I woke up in the morning, they were still right there. <laughs> so what you're trying to say? <laughs> so so what, you, what are you saying? So that shows you. That if we're both in the bed, of course it's not going to happen. Yeah, because we're at war. We are not at war. No, we are at war. How it's are we war at war? Going on outside. How? If I don't fight back. <laughs> You, because at some point in the night, when I'm asleep, you do an alligator roll. <laughs> I do not. I do not. And that, and the sheets, and the comforter. I don't know what you're talking about. Are almost completely on your side. They, I don't know what you're. I talking. think the comforter is actually covering beans <laughs> in his bed on your side. By the time we wake up in the morning. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't, huh? Because there's several Because you don't nights, live on my side of the bed. There's several nights that I'm sleeping, I don't move. And everything stays just the way it is. You think you don't move. <laughs> you move. I do not move. There's times that I feel your elbow on me. Remember the night that your yes. elbow was on my head? Yes. <laughs> I am not without fault. <laughs> so why are you talking about me with the... Because you said we want to have awards that we're going to talk about. It. You said let's talk about it. <laughs> so let's talk about the elbow that be in my head no. on my body. Because you be elbow on my body. The elbows don't be anywhere. <laughs> The elbow, you got that once or twice. That was it. It was more than once. I felt elbow three times, four okay, times, five times. Move up five times. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, this, it's a bear, it's a drop of water in the ocean at this point. I don't appreciate this. <laughs> We're not going to talk about the people's elbow you get to my kidneys. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm what? talking about the people's elbow you get to my kidney, the kidneys, the rock. <laughs> I don't do that. I be sleep. Okay. <laughs> I be sleep. <laughs> I love it. I be sleep. I don't know what he's talking about. All I know is I get hot. I kick the covers off. Yeah, we do that. We both do that. We kick the, the covers night. off because we're burning up. There's just not enough air circulation in the bedroom. That's true. We need like one of those standing tower breezer things so that move five hundred dollar fans yes we need one of those lord have mercy yes we do because the room is just like remember my old place i had a ceiling fan i know and it was great you had a well you had a patio door that you never opened but yeah yeah the ceiling fan was the, good. Oh, the ceiling fan was great and i had those dark curtains that made the room like a cave so that i could sleep you like that i like darkness Mm-hmm. Yes. You like that? I like that. No, no, we still gotta fix that. Yeah. Yo, man, hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, so good yeah. Times. Good you times. know, you see what I have to deal with. He's trying to cue. I got me jokes. I got jokes. Taking the covers when he be elbowing me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too. This was fun. This is a fun episode. It was a very fun. And the drink is fantastic. The drink is really good. And I would like more. I bet you would. We gotta have some dinner. It was time for dinner. Ooh, yes. We ain't gonna tell y'all what, but we gotta it's have gonna dinner. be good. It's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. I think I'm on uh, I'm on I'm in this department tonight. Hey, I'm Working happy to be department. out of the department tonight. Because I've been on the department all week and I've been producing some stellar de- deals. That's your department. Yeah, but I've been working hard in this department. Yeah, this as you should. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Yes. I've been very happy. I'm very appreciative mm-hmm. of the meals that you prepare. We have to talk about that in another episode, too. We do. Do, we, do other people have departments? Departments. And how do people perform in those departments? Yeah. Yes. Cook, we have departments. Because yeah. I cook from scratch. Lips she does. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, man, like I said, I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate great time. You, too. you know what I'm saying? Yo, being shout out to Beans for, you know what I'm saying? Being good. Not barking. Not barking. Just relaxing today. Beansy, you good, buddy? Yeah. You chilling. You chilling. You ready hey. to get back to the food? Look at it. Oh, God. You know, lit him up. Hey, buddy. Oh, God. Here we go. Hey, Yo, man, y'all be good out there. Yes. Thank you for listening. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, and give us some stars. <laughs> Yo. Okay, give us some ratings, people. It's your boy Brocky here. And Trina Marie. We are the Where's Brunch Podcast. Bye.